Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to show you how to set up AI for your local development workflow. I didn't want to use tools like ChatGPT from OpenAI because they're proprietary and they're very restrictive by nature. Luckily, there's another project here called Mistral, and they have a bunch of models that are actually open. And now they're licensed under Apache 2, so that's an open source license. I've seen some debates, um, you know, that this is not a fully open model because they've open sourced their weights, but some of their training data and some other things are still not completely open. But I think for our purposes, this is a, a, a great step in the right direction. Now, this project here, you can see, you know, it seems like the company is aligned with open and transparency by default. They have some open models here. You can look at their open models. Um, if you look at their product page, um, they have this uh, Mistral 7B and they have this Mixtral 8 by 7B, this mixture of experts model here. Now these are both licensed under Apache 2 for their weights and you can download them. Now this was actually kind of an interesting release here over here. I found this on Twitter. Um, essentially, they kind of released this under the radar. They just put a, a big torn out for their uh, mix, Mixtral product, the mixture of experts product. And they didn't really do any big announcement. Um, they just kind of put it on their Twitter and so you can kind of download it and use this locally. Um, also, the company seems really aligned with the type of uh, things that we look for in open companies. So um, one of their founders here uh, removed this restrictive language about not being able to use their models to train other models and do some other things. So they actually, this used to be in their terms of service, uh, but it was since removed. So that's pretty cool. I think that's um, definitely something that we look for in terms of uh, uh, our projects when we're interested in them. Now. There are several different endpoints that you could look at. So they have three different models that are released right now. So there's a tiny, there's a small, and then there's a medium. Now the tiny and the small are both Apache 2 uh, licensed and they're released and you can download these locally and run them locally. Now their medium is not released as far as I know at this point. So this is still only on their platform and it's uh, the only way you can access it is behind their API and you have to have a subscription set up to run that model. So um, that's interesting. I'm curious, like this alludes to me that these naming conventions, tiny, small, and medium, that there might be a large or extra large released at some point. And I'm curious if that happens, if they will then license their next largest model under Apache 2 and release that publicly as well. And that's what I'm kind of hoping they're going to do. And I actually don't mind that model. So they, uh, and, and this is just my speculation, by the way, I'm not sure if this is what they're doing and I haven't seen anything confirming this, but if they are making money off their largest uh, current model, and then they release them open source afterwards. I think that's actually kind of an interesting model and uh, helps the open source ecosystem continue to move forward and, and spark some innovation for some other folks to use these tools. Um, I've seen some people talking about this. So uh, talking about this Mistral model. So I, I believe this is the Mistral model that um, Anton is talking about. So basically using this locally, um, if you do some fine tuning, you can get this working at uh, close to a chat GPT 3.5 uh, level uh, for a local model, which is really cool. Um, so I think that's that's awesome that these tools are really powerful. It seems like Mistral's doing a good job in general of, um, you know, uh, really pushing the forefront of uh, AI. So hopefully you're not feeling like you're making big compromises by going the open route. And so uh, th this is my way of trying to get that level, the chat GPT level of um, AI, but also supporting a company that seems a little more aligned with our interests. Um, if you do want to run uh, models locally, there's this cool project over here called Olama. So you could use this to uh, run these locally. This also is interesting because this is a Go-based product. So if you come over here to the GitHub page, you can see this is Go. But this actually allows you to run multiple models locally. So you could try uh, the tiny version of Mistral. You could try the, the um, uh, medium, uh, sorry, not medium, what is it, small uh, version as well. Um, so you could run those different uh, models locally um, and switch between them. You could also run, uh, you know, Llama 2 or something like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think that there's some interesting things happening in that space. Now, for my purposes, I just want the easiest way to get up and running using AI in my code editor. So I use VS Codium. Uh, it's the open source version of VS Code. And I just want to basically be able to use these tools without a ton of setup. Um, and I actually... Uh, if possible, not even run them locally. Uh, although I think that's a really uh, good model if you do want to do that. You probably have faster performance and you can probably fine tune it to your specific code base if you wanted to do something like that. But for now, I just want to show an easy way to get up and running without doing that. So I found this project over here called Continue. This is um, a VS Code plugin among other things. So 
um, this is an easy way to integrate uh, AI models into my VS Codium. Now, you could run local models with this plugin or you could run an API model. Um, and so we're actually going to go and we're going to set up an account uh, on Mistral and then use the Mistral medium because I'm, I'm very excited by uh, the promise of how good this could be. So um, I've seen this tweet over here uh, talking about using Mistral medium. So this is the uh, model that is still closed source behind um, Mistral's API, but th that apparently you can get ChatGPT four level code generation. And there's a lot of, this thread is really interesting if you take a look at it. Um, so they compare some of the answers um, and actually in a lot of places, Mistral Medium was actually better than ChatGPT4. It was also more concise. So it was outputting less tokens, which is a little more economic for your, your wallet, which is great because you typically pay by token behind these APIs. Um, and then there's also some significant cost reductions. So um, even at the same level of tokens, it's a much cheaper than uh, OpenAI's pricing model. So this could be uh, a very interesting um, a project to look at for folks who just want to save money uh, and get a, a near ChatGPT experience. So that's what it was interesting to me. Um, I did at first uh, try to integrate this uh, Mistral medium with Continue and it wasn't available, but I went on Discord and I actually asked if they had any plans to add Mistral as a provider um, to the Continue plugin. And Nate got back to me and said, yep, actually that's already something that they're doing. They just need to expose it. And he was nice enough to go and quickly um, changed their, their pre-release um, version of Continue to allow this. So I tried it out earlier. It worked really great. So um, let me just show you how to do that now. And uh, yeah, and then hopefully you can get up and running with this kind of paradigm as well. So I have um, my VS Codium open over here. I just have the Plantico project open. People who know this channel are, are familiar with, with this project, I'm sure. Um, and basically, uh, I can come over here and I can go into my extensions and I can search for Continue. Continue. And you see here, this top one here is the project that I'm interested in. So if I click on this project here, um, it opens it up. And then um, uh, I can basically come here and install a different version. So instead of clicking install, I'm gonna click this down arrow and I'm going to install the pre-release version. So not the stable release, but the pre-release so I can get that new change for the Mistral API in there. Um, if you do watch this video, uh, in the future, there's a chance that it'll be included in the release version, the stable release. So maybe you won't have to do this, but if you're watching this uh, soon after it's posted, you probably want to install this, uh, install this pre-release version. So I'm going to click on that. It's installing over here. Um, and then I can come and you see over here, now I have this uh, new tab open, uh, this continue tab. And if I click on that, you can see here um, that it actually has a, a prompt here and I can actually start doing some questions like, um, I don't know, what is the best programming language? Press enter. Um, it's doing some thinking. And so it's actually answering here. So this is pretty interesting. So you can see down here that it's currently using ChatGPT4, which I was confused by at first. I was like, how is it using ChatGPT4? Um, and the, the way that it's using this is actually, um, I believe ChatGPT4 comes with a trial version. So I think you can get some tokens for free without even having an API license because I don't have a license to um, ChatGPT4. Um, so uh, at some point, I assume this will stop working when you ask enough questions and uh, you get enough tokens in response. Um, you can actually also see here, here that the Mistral medium is already set up. This is because I didn't delete my config. So it's actually picking, on, picking up on the config that I had created previously. But if you haven't done that, um, essentially what you can do over here is um, click the plus icon next to your model. And then you have these providers and these models. So if you want an op uh, a local model, you could come down here and you could use something like, you know, the Mistral um, model. And you could actually show that you want to use Olama. That's a project I looked at earlier. So you could use that as um, your provider here. Um, and then you could use local models. Um, in our case, we're going to come over here to the providers and we're going to set up um, the Mistral API um, from their actual server. So I'm going to click on Mistral API. And you can see here that it's looking for an API key and then it wants me to select um, the model that I want to use. So let me come back over to um, our uh, Mistral website here. And if I'm on the product tab here, um, you can see that it says uh, access our platform. So this opens up the console. Um, of course, if you didn't already have um, an account, you can come over here to the homepage and you can uh, sign up for an account. And actually right now, um, Currently, you actually have to go on a wait list to get an account access, but for me, it only took about a day 
to get uh, account access. So I have an account already, so I'm gonna come over here and sign into the platform. Access the platform. Okay, so I'm already logged in over here. Um, this is where you would set up your uh, subscription and your billing. So basically you add a credit card and then over in billing, you can say what kind of limit you want per month. You can set the um, the euro amount. Um, so I say you don't wanna exceed a certain amount of euros per month uh, in your payment. I set a really low threshold for now because I don't wanna get a huge bill. And then over here on your API key, you can set a new API key. So I'm gonna generate one here. It generates a new API key. This is the only time you'll ever see this API key. So in order to use it, make sure you copy it over. So I'm gonna click the copy button. And um, I know people are gonna to try to use this API key to try to get free generation on my account. Just so you know, I'm deleting this API key right after the video. So this API key will no longer work. Um, but for the demo, uh, I copied it over and then I'm gonna paste it over here into my um, API key in my continue plugin. And then I'm gonna choose the model. And in this case, I want the best model or you know, theoretically the best model is this Mistral Medium. I'm gonna click on this. And now I have this Mistral Medium model. And you can see here, actually you have an old API key that I used to have as well. So um, these are uh, this is the config for um, the continue um, plugin. And I have uh, this Mistral Medium model. And I have my old Mistral Medium that I tried earlier with the API key that I used previously. You can also see here that the provider here for the Jap chat GPT-4 is the free trial. Um, and then, yeah, and then there's some other configuration about how I want certain slash commands to work. So there's, there's things that you can do to like automatically edit your code or um, do some other actions on them. So let me just hop in and take a look at what some of this stuff looks like. Um, let's do something easy for now. I'm going to highlight uh, some text here. And I'm gonna ask the, the chat to explain what this is. So the way I'm going to try to get this to work, and I had some problem with this before, so I would basically, if I highlight this and I try to ask it a question, like what does this code do? This will not work because it, it actually doesn't know I'm highlighting this right now. There's, it has no awareness right now. So it's gonna say, I don't know what you're highlighting or something along those lines, I believe. Um, oh, okay, so I got an error here. Um, let me just check here. Um, let me let me do a couple of things here. Let me delete the old API key, which I believe was this one. I think our new one. Um, yep, XK. So this is our new one. This is our old one. Let's just delete this and see if this works at all. Um, delete our old API key. Save that. Um, let's try this again. I might have to reload the plugin. Um, Let me just do this real quick. I'm gonna to switch to the old, to the stable release and then I'm gonna switch back and see if that lets us do anything here to actually reload this and get it working. So it's installing the stable release right now. Might take a second. Okay, and then um, it wants to reload. I'll just reload this real quick. And then I'm gonna reinstall um, the other version. So let me come back here um, to my extensions. And I'm going to switch to the pre-release version. It's gonna install that again. Okay, then it, it requires a reload. So I'm gonna reload it again. And let's see if we can get this working. Um, go back to the continue prompt. Okay, then I'm gonna to try to show this one more time. So if I have this highlight, I say, what does this code do? I assume it's gonna tell me it doesn't know how, it doesn't know, okay, yeah. I can't provide an answer because um, you haven't posted any code, so it doesn't know what I'm talking about. Now, if I highlight this and I press Control, Shift, and M, okay, so now it has this awareness of the code I've actually selected. It's, it's prompting me right now to do an edit command on this, but I actually don't wanna do an edit, so I'm gonna backspace on this, and I'm just going to say, what does this do? question mark. 
Okay, the code is written in a Go language. It's used to create a file path. Um, so, yep, it shows the code, the, the top line there. It says this line is using the file path join function to concatenate the current directory, the dot, with the value of the builder uh, variable. So it's combining our current directory with the builder. That makes sense. The result is assigned to the build path variable. This is a way of creating file paths that are compatible with the operating system. Great, that makes sense. I mean, this is pretty easy stuff, but that's, that's cool that it can do it. And then SPA path, this line here, this line is creating a new path by adding the slash um, to the value uh, of this entry point, yep. And then another slash to um, the end, uh, yep, of build path, sure. And the result is the SPA variable. I mean, obviously this is not the greatest example, it's not a very complicated thing, but it's cool that it can go and actually read the code and try to figure out what's happening there. Um, so in summary, the code is creating a specific file path based on the provided values. Yep, okay, so it's generally working. That's great. Um, up here you can see, uh, I can click on this. I can remove this selected uh, code prompt or I can come here and I can edit this range. So I could press edit. Um, potentially, I, I don't know if I can come over here now and actually edit um, how much is selected. Uh, probably better to create a new selection. Again, I'm not really that experienced with using this. I just downloaded it, but um, this will at least hopefully help you get up and going and doing some uh, changes. So um, let me see if there's an example of an edit. Um, let's see here, maybe maybe they can edit this. So let me do Control, Shift, M again on this. So edit, um, I don't know, can you make this better? <laughs> this may be a, hor a horrible prompt. Um, because it's a little bit subjective. But um, basically what happens is when you use like an edit forward slash, it will, sorry, a slash command edit, it will actually create a diff for you over here um, trying to optimize your code or make it better. Okay, so for instance, it's, you can see it writing right now. So it's uh, it's still writing, but it's basically saying, hey, maybe we could remove this code over here and then we could change it to this code over here. And then I can basically accept it I can reject it or I can edit it and, and make some changes to it. So that's pretty cool. And you can go through there and, you know, uh, hopefully you can toggle between your prompt brain and then your coding brain and you can go through and uh, interact with the, the prompt engineering and, and the coding uh, task over here on the side um, to hopefully speed up your dev workflow. Anyways, I thought that was a an interesting way to, to get up and running with Mistral. Uh, hopefully this helps you out. Um, continues a really cool plugin. Go support those guys. Um, definitely go support Mistral. Hopefully they continue to uh, promote open models and um, uh, continue to, to kind of push open source uh, AI forward. So I think this is a uh, really interesting progress. I'm, I'm really excited to use this in my daily workflow and I'll definitely post more videos here if people are interested um, and as I continue to learn this workflow and uh, I'll follow up. All right, great, thanks, bye.